Hi, everybody. Thank you all for joining us in today's extra special interview with my friend, Lisa Duncan. Lisa, hi and welcome. Hey, Sarah. It's nice to be with you. I am so excited for today. You already know how excited I am. I keep telling you every five minutes. <laughs> so first, um, let's start with what most of my audience is uh, going to love, which is the carnivore transformation, the carnivore success story. Can you share a little bit um, how you came to find carnivore and everything that it has done for you? Oh, my goodness. Okay. Okay. So I am 52 years old, but when I was just probably about 44 or 45, I started noticing, like most women do, all of the changes mm -hmm. that I knew were probably my hormones and menopause. And so I pretty much just had accepted the fact that I was going to gain weight. I had accepted the fact that, you know, I was going to need a nap most days. And, you know, I was even going through things like my, like my chest being very sensitive and my skin breaking out real easy and just weird things like, you know, my balance not quite being the same and just different things like that, joint pain, things like that. And I just thought, this is it, you know, this is just, I'm getting older and it's just the way it is. So I kind of was like that for a few years and then it got worse and it got worse and then that's when I started going to the doctors. And so at that time, I, I didn't have really a regular doctor. I had just my OBGYN. And I would explain to him about my bloating and about my, you know, I don't even think I called it gut issues back then. I knew that I was someone that had a sensitive stomach all my life, but had never really... Um, been an issue like it never kept me from going anywhere it never you know affected me that much but it had gotten to the point where it really was it was I was getting so bloated and my stomach was hurting so bad that I never went anywhere without Tums Pepto you know all of the things like that and um, I'm trying to write this up because it, it went over probably about three years worth of trying to cut out chewing gum, trying to cut out drinking diet drinks, cut out eating chocolate, cut out, you know, I was just doing all of these different things. I was going to the doctor. I had like the ultrasound. I, they um, did my blood test. They put me on iron. I thinking that would make me where I wasn't as tired and foggy feeling. And the bottom line, after going from doctor to doctor to doctor, they finally sent me to a, a gastroenterologist uh -huh. and I got a colonoscopy and went through that whole process. And that is when they really introduced me to like the FODMAP diet. That's when they kind of first planted that seed of, yeah. because I knew like, you know, you're trying to be healthy yeah. and you're trying to lose weight. So what do you do? You eat lots of vegetables. <laughs> right. <laughs> the and exact thing salad. that's causing most of your symptoms. Yeah. Yes. A big yeah. salad every day. And then I could barely make it home before my body was just like, get it out. And it was, it was not, well, I'm not going to be graphic, but it was like, I could tell something was wrong. It wasn't just normal. It was like my body was like rejecting what I was eating. And, you know, it made it really hard to go out of town. It made it hard just every day. And I was sleeping with a heating pad, you know, just things like that. Right. And so after I went to the gastro, he did tell me that um, I was very inflamed, that definitely I needed to ease off the vegetables and I needed to, you know, find which ones ir were irritating me and things like that. And then, of course, he told me to take Benefiber and Align. And that is what so he told you to stay away from the fermentable fibers, but then he goes and gives you more fiber. Yes. And he's already retired. So wow. this is an older, right. one of the most popular gastros here in town. So even though they, none of the doctors really got to the problem, but they did kind of lead me down a good path because it made me start thinking about the FODMAPs and stuff yeah. like that. And then one of my subscribers I was kind of like telling my story throughout my videos through these years. And one of my subscribers mentioned that her husband was told to just eat meat to heal his gut mm. and that it had worked wonders for him. 
So I had that in the back of my mind, but even to me, a person who loves meat, that sounded weird. Right. But then one day I just keyed in allergic to vegetables on YouTube and up came Michaela Peterson, Sally Norton, like, cause back then that would have been, you know, over two years ago, it wasn't as prevalent on YouTube even. And then, oh, Dr. Gundry. Yeah. And that is when I learned about oxalates and lectins. And it was just like, it, it was like just the world opened up. Yeah. And I felt, you know, you almost feel justified or um, not crazy. Yeah. That you can eat vegetables. So I started eating just meat. It was the Monday or the Tuesday after Memorial Day. And I will always tell this story one week after just eating meat, I, I remember being at the beach and I called my mom and I said, I'm going to be okay. I felt for the first time clear in my head, happy, less bloated and hopeful wow. that I was going to get to like what was bothering me and that I wasn't going to like, I was just so scared, you know, of getting worse and worse and worse and worse the rest of my life. Yeah. So, um, I tried in the beginning to add in one thing at a time, like avocado, and just eat that for like two times. And then, you know, you have to give it a couple of days. Yeah. See how your body, because my body sometimes will take almost 48 hours. Yeah. And then it sets off this process. It's not just going to the bathroom one time. It, you can tell your body's really just not yeah. liking it. And so I tried this, I tried that, I tried berries, I tried avocado, I tried green beans, I tried cabbage, and it just got to the point where I thought, okay, why am I doing this? You know, if I feel so good just eating like this, I'm so satisfied, I'm losing this weight, I'm happy, I mean, everything in my life got better, and it, from that point on, it has just gotten better and better and better. And I've never looked back. And I, you know, I've really, I never intended to be carnivore. And I never really even knew it was a thing. I never intended to have this audience that I do that is carnivore. But I feel like I've almost, I, I feel good about it. Because I feel like they have seen what has happened. You know, they've seen me lose the weight. They've They've witnessed how I've acted. They've witnessed the fact that I have not gotten sick, not one sniffle in two and a half years. And then I did get COVID, right? which surprised me because my son got it and I didn't get it from him, but I got it when I traveled to Dallas. Interesting. But in my mind, I feel like COVID is such a different new thing. Yeah. Maybe your body, our normal, you know, antibodies and things, you haven't had that lifetime. To yeah. build up, you know, I want to ask you something about that, but it's going to be off the record. I'm just going to okay. take a note just because you know how much censorship they do around this topic that we can't yes. really, really share this information, unfortunately. Um, Agreed. you know, so I, I try to not go in everything that I really want to say about it, um, because I'm it just gets flagged right away. You can't, you know, yeah. One just narrative. Cut that off whenever, you, it, whatever you think. Yeah. Yeah. But we can start. Anyway, so I have not been sick in over like no allergies. Every year I used to get fall allergies really bad to the point where I would end up getting a sinus infection. Mm -hmm. I haven't had that. And I've just, my overall health has been amazing. And I think it was just a few months ago, I got life insurance and you know how they send the nurse to your house yeah. to do all of your levels. Yeah. And she told me, she gave me a card and she said in a couple of, she said about 10 days, you can go on this website and you can get your results, put in this, this pen and get your results. She said, it will be more extensive than your doctors because you know, they're, they're making sure not only are they checking your normal levels, but they're making sure you're not taking things to cheat those levels so that you qualify. Okay, I see. And even that put my cholesterol like perfect. I mean, of course my numbers are like, you know how it is, where you're, you're good. It's the ratio. My ratio is so good. Yes, yes. So anyway, I got approved and I took that, those results to my doctor and he didn't even need to do my blood work. He just kept a copy of that. 
Fantastic. Yeah. And you were mentioning how supportive your doctor is, even though he's like, maybe at the beginning, it wasn't his idea, but at least he has an open mind. Yes. When I first told him, because I was afraid, I had already kind of started it before I went to see him, but I knew that I needed to, especially with me having some influence and being able to share it, I wanted to make sure I wasn't I still say that I think people should should share it with their daughters because I don't know what else they've got going on. Yeah. But I wanted to make sure it wasn't anything bad for me to share. So, but I knew that I felt so good. I was, I had such anxiety that he was going to tell me to stop it. And I, I had so much anxiety. I was like, what am I going to do? Because I don't want to stop it. He was so open-minded. He said, what we're going to do is we're going to test your, do your lab, you know, reports or results or whatever every four months. And if it comes back high for your cholesterol, what we'll do is we won't stop there. We'll do the scan. Fantastic. To make sure. Mm. And so I was like, okay, he really gave me hope, you know? And so we did my blood work and it came back good. We did it the next time and we've done it, I think four times now. And I've made videos about that. I've shared my numbers and everything because that's one of my most asked questions is what about your cholesterol? Right. And, you know, it's just, it's gotten better and better and better. I so, am so happy to hear that. Did he do the lipid fractionation test, like the subtypes of cholesterol or just like the overall numbers? Probably just the overall. I don't remember. You know, it's my first time. Matter of fact, I didn't even have a regular internal medicine doctor. But when I started this whole process, my gynecologist said, you know, he was pretty much done with me. Couldn't figure out what, what was wrong with me. And they the gastro, had even the, the gastroenterologist or the guy. No, no, this was the OBGYN. The OBGYN. Did yeah. Know. Okay. Yeah. He said, um, and they had tested my blood um, levels to see if I was going in menopause. And they said I wasn't, which... <laughs> I was, but so he ended up referring me to the doctor I'm going to now. And so he was, he knew how long I had been suffering. He just knew it. I mean, my, it had gotten to the point where even my husband would go with me to like emphasize she is in pain. You know, something is wrong. It's not, wow. she's low iron, you know? And so do you feel like women, was, women aren't taken as seriously when we go to our doctors and complain of certain issues, especially when the, when it's not something so easily diagnosable, you know, when it's most of those things that we're suffering from are things that don't have a label, but they just lower our quality of life. Yes, so do you feel yeah. like it made a difference when your husband went? I do. And I feel like it, it was a, probably a lot on me. What woman wants to go talk to a young male doctor and tell them she's got IBS right. and, you know, issues right. like that, right? you know, so maybe I, you know, felt like, I don't know. I, I mean, I had pretty much, I mean, it got to the point where every time I went, I was having to stress to him, something is wrong because I told him, I said, it even feels like there's something in my stomach, like a ball or something. I could feel it when I was like put my shoes on or something, which the gastro doctor said that that was very correct because when your gut gets inflamed and it's having this reaction, it sends lots of fluid mm -hmm. to your intestines. And then you, so you feel it. It's more than air. You, know, right. you feel it in your gut. And I was getting just so bloated. So what did your doctor say now that you have without any other doctor's help really you figured it out and you healed yourself so I'm, I'm curious to know their reaction your doctor's reaction right now there every time I see him now he is happy you know he's happy for me because he never knew me being happy and I lost 30 32 pounds wow you know over this time because I lost all that water weight right. and I lost all that fat and, you know, so of course I look better. I, you know, I feel better and I'm sure he can tell the difference in me when I come in his office, you know, I'm beaming. I'm so excited. I don't dread getting on the scales. I don't dread my blood work. It's almost like every time I go, it is just that much more that I'm doing the right thing. Wow.
Yeah, uh, that's fantastic. What I, it just makes me so happy to hear success stories on the carnivore exactly. diet, and and in a way also a little bit angry, like all of these years that you've had to suffer, and all these doctors couldn't help you. You know, there's something fundamentally wrong in the way we're doing medicine these days. If yeah, and that's something that's new. something that you can probably you know talk to more than I can because see I didn't know that doctors really don't consider what you're eating no they're not they really don't. no the, the, if if they're taught I mean they're they're taught like a chapter and that chapter is basically what the academy of nutrition and dietetics puts out which is the worst possible thing you could possibly eat which is that, is, like that food pyramid <laughs> the food that, exactly yes when they gave me the FODMAP which it was on a piece of paper and it was like crooked and like had been run off like a million times. It was right. just like something to hand me. You know what right. I mean? And they, I think they handed me that and the food pyramid. Wow. You know? Wow. Which, you know, even like as much as we know about people that are intolerant to wheat and gluten and we're still. Yeah. Yeah. You know? That's that's where the money is. You know, when you have food companies paying thousands of dollars so that they can co-author brochures along with the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics about what a healthy diet is. I mean, where do you think that's going to lead us to? You know, it doesn't, yeah. doesn't really require somebody to go through what I did and get a PhD to figure that out, you know? If I anything, know. getting my PhD was like the worst thing because you just, you get brainwashed with the wrong message, you know, and then it takes you longer to peel off all of that brainwashing. Yeah, later and I, later. I think that's why I don't really hold it against the doctors because if that's all they've been taught yeah. and even as society, you know, yeah, it's just all we've been taught is, yeah. They, I mean, they go in obviously with good intent. Obviously, nobody yes. wants to go and and you know go through med school and go through all of the hardships and the late nights if they didn't really have a passion and uh, really wanting to help people. Um, it's just unfortunate that uh, they don't end up being able to help unless it's like mm -hmm. just a band-aid you know just give me a drug to numb down my symptoms never really taking the time to figure out what caused this in the first place you know yeah like Where the statins, statins yeah. Oh. and yes you know, everything all diabetics and stuff yeah. like that like yeah. you know I, I did a video on that harvard study oh yes 95 percent of the participants reverse better and yeah. most were able to get off of their insulin and yeah I mean, gosh you know yeah and oh, I just yeah people, I look around and yeah. I'm just like I, like when I'm in the airport I'm, I look around and I just think how much healthier people could be yeah you know? so, trust me this is my life every day it's like I look around me and I feel like everybody else is going mad you know it's like am I the crazy one or is everybody else crazy <laughs> like, what's yeah, but going? they'll look at you they'll and look at you like crazy. I'm crazy because right. I'm eating a burger you right know? us the healthy <laughs> people are are the are the crazy ones who actually overcame so much and I I really love your YouTube channel I can't wait to ask you all about it and I'm going to link it below, and I'm sure it's going to be here on the screen for people to check Thank it you. out. Um, but before we get to that, I want to know, what is your diet like, and what exactly do you eat, and if you take any supplements? Okay, you you may not approve of my diet. Oh, I'm sure I will. <laughs> I, I kind of, um, it's not that I pride myself on it, but I like to tell people, because a lot of people, I think, get intimidated by you have to eat nose to tail. You have to eat grass fed. You have to eat liver. You can't eat out, you know, I mean, things like that. So I like to tell what I eat because I break a lot of rules, but yet I've still been successful. Yeah. So I naturally intermittent fast mm -hmm. most days because I'm just not hungry until lunch. But like today, I knew I was going to be doing this and then I probably didn't want to eat till dinner so we had scrambled eggs scrambled eggs okay. with a, a little bit of cheese in there okay. and then tonight um my son requested that we go to Carabas, the Italian restaurant oh okay so I will just get a steak and I like the seasoning may upset my stomach just the slightest bit but nothing I won't get over you know, in a day or two, it won't set off any big thing. Like if I were to eat asparagus or something like that. Right. 
Um, so that's not going out to eat like that isn't something I do a lot, but I still want to do it every once in a while with my family, you know? Yeah. And, but this is what most people, they cannot get over it. And it's one of the reasons I love, I know you like Dr. Ken Berry. Of course. Yeah. Because he's had so it on my channel. He's, yeah. Yeah. And it, a lot of times because I work at home, it's just, I like to get out of the house for a little bit. I love being in my car. So I will just go to McDonald's and get a double quarter pounder with ketchup and cheese only, no bun, mm -hmm. and just eat it with a knife and fork. Yeah. I, I used to do that a lot too when yeah. back when I had to drive to work. Not now I work online, but yeah, this is the best. And they 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 understand you right away. They're like, okay, and they'll give you this plastic thing, and they'll have yes. as many patties as you want, bacon, cheese, whatever. And I just yeah. tell them to remove the pickle and uh, a little bit of like onions. I just yeah. They, oh, they know me there. I don't. I can just really pull up and say, hey, it's me. <laughs> and they oh. know my order. And, um, and then every night I eat, um, we have the Blackstone Grill, which is kind of like a griddle. Yes. And my husband cooks for me and I get the thin ribeyes, the thin Angus ribeyes from Walmart. Oh. They're the best. Okay. And I get the, um, if I live at the beach, so during the summer we can get fresh shrimp a lot of times, but okay. if I can't, I do get the frozen shrimp, which I know farm raised all that kind of stuff, but um, that's what I eat with my steak every night. So Where are I, you located? Um, You're in North Carolina, right? Uh huh. Wilmington. Okay. At so the beach, Wrightsville Beach. Oh, okay. I didn't know. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually in Hampstead, which is outside of Wilmington. So I'm like on the intercoastal waterway, and I'm like in between Topsail and Wrightsville Beach. So we have lots of fresh seafood and stuff here. So oh. like scallops. Last night I had scallops. Okay. And um, shrimp. And I'll go to my parents, and my mom will fix me a. I, ribeyes are my favorite. I started out with fillets. I thought fillet was my favorite steak, until I got into ribeyes, and then I realized I loved that. I need that fat, you know. Yes. And then um. So that's what I eat on a regular basis. I'm one of those people that eat the same things over and over yeah, again. Me too. Yeah. But I've all, even when I ate whatever, I ate the same things. I ate a salad every day. Right. You know, it was the same thing. So that's to me, are you familiar with like a capsule wardrobe? No. Like people talk about their capsule wardrobe Well, they'll have like 15 or 20 articles of clothing and they're, they all go together and it makes it easy for them to put their clothes on. Right. And well, all, the, all like, the colors. Yeah. I know about yeah. the concept. I didn't know that was the name capsule. Wardrobe. Yes. So like, that's kind of how to, I figure yeah. that's, that's kind of how my meals are. They're kind right. of like a capsule wardrobe and I can mix and match them. And it takes all of the pressure. Off I love it. Of, you make me so happy. You're like two of my favorite topics is like fashion and yes. food and carnivore. <laughs> I'm so happy right now. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Um, let's, uh, let's see. Do you do, oh, do you do coffee? No, I don't, but I never did, but I do drink Diet Coke. Oh, oh okay. So there is caffeine there. So, okay. Even if you're having like Diet Cokes or do you have like say Gatorade zero or something? No, like I don't drink the only, I drink water. Mm -hmm. I tried all the different kinds of waters and green teas, but I just prefer regular water or yeah. diet Coke, or I don't drink caffeine after like four o'clock or five o'clock. So I might have like a diet Sierra mist or something yeah, like that. It's caffeine free, right? And, um, but you know, I know there's a big thing about diet drinks could keep you from losing weight or keep you out of ketosis. Uh -huh. But um, in the beginning, I did the ketosis strips every day. Yeah. And diet Coke never kept me out of ketosis. Out of it, yeah. 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 That's, so, I, I think me too. It doesn't affect me in that way. It's yeah. very strange for some people. It does for others. You have to. Yeah. I do think it's, I do. I think it's yeah. an individual thing. Yeah. And also back before I realized, um, before I changed the way I ate, I did try to remove all diet drinks from my diet. Like for the it. sweetness. Yeah. And just, I just drank water. Okay. And ate salads and was eating healthy food and was still miserable. So, okay. you know, a lot of people say, oh, the diet drink might be what's causing your IBS. Well, it wasn't. I tried that. Right. Right. So, yeah. 
Okay. And clearly now you don't have it, even though you do you have it every day or every other day? How often would you say you have, I have it? I have Diet Coke every day because I get one with my burger. Oh, right. <laughs> the McDonald's. That's like my treat. <laughs> I love it. Okay, <laughs> cool. Well, this is fantastic for people to hear that you can find so much healing despite not being this perfect strict carnivore that it's yeah. nothing but a ribeye and nothing else you know because people sometimes get scared of diving into carnivore diet and i feel like they hear more stories like that and the more transparent and honest we are the more people are actually going to flock into a much better way of eating i agree you know I agree. Just better quality of life and i do like i like if my husband fixes um chicken thighs maybe i'll have some chicken thighs yeah um if if we don't like i we're picky about our steaks if the steaks are too lean like we probably get the ones that most people are dodging you know because it's right. a lot of fat but if the if there aren't any good steaks then i'll eat the 80 20 hamburger meat and we'll just eat burgers yeah and i do eat bacon sometimes but it's not a regular thing because i felt like bacon can kind of upset my stomach a little bit mm. but when I go out of town and like I know I need to find what I can eat and I can find someone that serves a bacon cheeseburger or eggs and bacon I will eat it then okay. but it's just not my regular thing do you get cravings um for sweet stuff desserts no. it's the most satisfied I've ever been I crave what I eat and then it's done Wow. And then when I get hungry again for dinner, I'm craving what I'm going to eat and then it's done. It's what about be, it is. It, what about before? Oh, before? Well, I had a major sweet tooth. Desserts were my favorite. I mean, sometimes we would go out to eat and I would just not even fool myself and not even get the entree and just get the dessert. <laughs> So yeah, it's like who are we fooling? Just yeah, bring it. yeah, why fool myself? I love it. So, so I would do that sometimes. Yeah, it's, like, it's just let's the brownie butter pie or something. So and then it would make me feel terrible. But it, it, you know, when you feel bad, then you get to the point where all you're looking forward to is when you go eat. But then when you eat, it makes you feel bad. It's a weird thing. So when I start, when I, when I got better and better, I mean, within like weeks it's like your mind just becomes so clear and you're so satisfied with your meals. I have nightmares that I accidentally eat something bad. You know what I mean? Like they say alcoholics have nightmares that they've got, gone off the wagon. Right. I will have these nightmares and I wake up and I'm so thankful that I didn't go off. It was know? just a dream. Oh, I yeah. love it. That yeah. is so funny. I love it. I'm so happy for you. I mean, this is why I talk so much about the carnivore diet. It's definitely not for like the business part, because trust me, it's hard to do business in this field. Yes. There's no money. Yes. I have yeah. people ask me all the time, am I making money off of the carnivore diet? And I was like, I would love to know how to do I that. I wish. <laughs> uh, trust me, I would have known about it a long time ago. It's yeah. very difficult because... um. The vast majority of food companies are not carnivore. They're, you can't make a huge profit off of that. Ranchers are barely hanging by a thread. You know, they don't have that profit margin. And so if I were advocating for a plant-based diet or a vegan diet, the sheer amount of money that I could be doing right now, because I could work with 99% of the food companies out there, all of the Absolutely. different concoctions that they come up with. But um, I can't, you know, I, I don't believe in that. I, and, and I know. You know? Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, let's talk about the real fun stuff. Let's talk okay. about your YouTube channel, which okay. I absolutely love it. I well, thank you. As much as I love passion, you the way that you bring it to life and the way that you like you're just so relatable and oh, you're so you. beautiful so please tell us how did you come across that idea what was the process like how long did it take you to grow it all that all that fun stuff okay well I um okay I've been on YouTube since I believe 2009 so I believe 14 years 13 wow. or 14 years in in February I lose count and um I have always been this girl I've always been just very feminine. I've always loved fashion. I've always loved anything like um, fashion, makeup, 
you know, beauty, uh, be just being a girl. Yeah. And I've always loved sharing. Like I'm the girl that when you come over to my house, I'm going to show you everything new in case you want to get it too, you know? So I, my children were small and I was a stay at home mom and I just I had a, a computer in my kitchen that I would just be on while I was cooking and everything. And I typed in it, Sex in the City, the movie had just come out. Oh my God, I love it. Yeah. I had gone to see it and I was like, <laughs> just loving it. Yes. And I typed in um, makeup that Sarah Jessica Parker wore in the movie okay. and up popped a video on YouTube of a girl named Lauren Luke. I don't know if she even still makes videos hmm. and she was doing a tutorial and I fell in love. I could not believe there were girls out there that were like me. And so I just, you know, watched videos and commented. And then that Christmas, my husband got me a laptop and one night on a whim, I didn't do my hair. I didn't change my outfit. My kids are like playing in the background. I just did my first video and I never looked back. I've been doing videos ever since, you know, it wasn't a time, you know, that's how, why my name is Lisa, Lisa D1, because it was just your username. You didn't make up a name. No one was making money. Right. Um, no one had professional setups. We were all using our webcams and it was just for fun. And I just love it. I love it. It's been so rewarding. I was able to stay home with my children. Eventually I did get to the point where I was making money and then it's just, I probably haven't taken it serious, like as a business until probably the last, I would say five or six years, you know, I, when my children got older, my, mm -hmm. my son now is 18 and my daughter's 22. And um, so now, you know, I'm able to devote the time and everything to it. So it's just been rewarding. It's been a journey, ups and downs, you know, um, I learned a lot about people because I have lived here in Wilmington in the South my whole life. My right. parents were born here. I grew up with my whole family. So, you know, it's been a, an education in people, right. <laughs> mostly good, mostly good. good. <laughs> and, and, um, but it's been fun. And some of the people that have been with me have been with me the whole time, you know, like this people that you hired. No, just my subscribers. Okay. I mean, they've been with me for, you know, 13 years. That's the beautiful yeah, part of it, amazing. that connection, yes. that community. That's true. Do, so have you reached a point where you ha you hire help or do you do everything yourself to this day? I do everything. My husband is retired. He is, I'm 52 and he's 62. And so he retired at 60 and he helps me tremendously. Like today he helped me set up my light and make sure I, you know, and he helps me take pictures he helps me. He's an IT guy. Okay. So he helps me with any IT issues. He helps me as much as he can. The main thing he helps me with is helping me run the house because you mm -hmm. got, you know how it takes a lot of time to edit videos and do yeah. the things. And then I just, I think three days ago, hired a girl to help me with Instagram and reels and things like that. And already it has just been like, why haven't I done this? Right. So that's really helped. A and lot. your niche is great, which is what we were talking about before we started this video. Like I really wanted to get into and expand my brand. I mean, I, I don't think, I think everybody already knows that I'm also about fashion lifestyle and stuff. Cause I do have those videos here and there, but like, I just put so much more science that some newer subscribers might not know, but I want to do more of the fashion but stuff. Cause see, the I niche is so much bigger. First of all, yes. It more views, more impact, more income, and it's even a bigger passion of mine, you know? It's, yeah, and that's part so, of being a woman is that yeah. carnivore almost enhances every other aspect of your life. Your life, exactly. You're going to enjoy fashion more. You're going to enjoy makeup. You're going to enjoy exactly. skincare because you're healthy. You're going to enjoy your body. You're going to enjoy your children, your husband. It enhances every aspect of your life, especially so well I think put. women, exactly. you know? So yeah, it goes. And 
It's funny because I'm the opposite. I have people come to my channel for carnivore and then they're thinking, what is the rest of this stuff, you know? So it's, it's kind of like that with me too. Right. You know, we have to show people that, you know, you're it, carnivore or how you eat, however you eat is, you know, it just is so important and it, it feeds to the rest of your life. Yes. We're, we're, you know? we're, we have multiple facets, right? So it's, we're interested in more than one thing. And so the YouTuber is about sharing your life and sharing your passions. It's not about putting yourself in a box and saying, like, I can only talk about the science and, you know, I can't yeah. do anything else. Right. I think, I think one of the, the most special part of women is the fact that we do love to share. That's part sure. of our feminine essence is sharing with other women. We're not as much, um, you know, men are more doers and they will tell you what to do. But I think women love, we like to feel it and share it more. I love and that. I yes. That. And that's why we're so good, like with communication in general, yeah. we're far more communicative. And yeah, maybe this has been like a societal thing that we've just grown um being more comfortable sharing, sharing our emotions, sharing our experiences. Um, I think everybody should share, you know, I think it's great yeah, because it just makes you happier overall and you don't have to like bottle anything in, you know? Yeah, exactly. And it doesn't take, like you're a doctor, so you can share, you know, lots of good factual things. Whereas I feel like I can just share my experience and it it's that all of it together is so special. That's why I'm, I'm anxious to connect my subscribers to you too because you can share that part you know I'm so excited More factual <laughs> did I say I'm excited <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it okay let's go back to the beginning how long did it take you over that first video that you posted how many views did it get what like oh, you know yeah I don't even know because um I have not grown like a lot of YouTubers have because I have never been, like you talk about the niche, I have never had a really strong niche. I have never, I didn't ever just focus on makeup. I didn't just focus on fashion. I focused on so many different things that I, I and now carnivore, I have a divided audience. So my niche now, I would say is women over 45. It's mm -hmm. more of an age. So if I had to do it again, if I had to do it again, I would do it all the same. But if I had to advise someone else, I would say niching down is your best, it's is the hard, best though. policy. Yeah. Because you will get a more dedicated audience that watch every video and you will be, you'll know what to do. Um, but, but you know, you're still growing. It's not yeah. like, Right. I mean, even if you're talking about other things, overall, the trend keeps going up, but maybe not as quickly as somebody who just niched down a lot more and just yes. focused more on one topic. Yeah. And right. I do get I, my percentage of views versus my subscribers is high. And I my subscribers are very dedicated and I'm so thankful. So I feel lucky and I'm, you know, I don't I don't want to do anything different because I like I like the path that I have led, but I think it's so different now. Yeah. And I, I really appreciate, I am thankful and appreciate the fact that everything I do is from my passion. It's, I love it. It's not work to me. I love yeah. it. So I do think a lot of people start it as a job and it can be frustrating because you don't grow as fast. And I know it is, it's, it's frustrating when you see someone growing so fast and you don't feel like they're authentic and you don't you don't feel like they're doing things the right way but I think we all have our path just like carnivore we all have our yeah. path you know yeah yeah that's so, the thing with the with with YouTube is like you, somebody will come into the same um field that you're in and like they'll blow up so quickly and it's like wait I've been yeah. I've been working so hard for so many years and I get that um, and then, but you know, the, what I try to do is like, okay, what is it about them that makes them go, grow so much faster? And I try to like take um, tips and, and kind of see if, if it's something, a skill that I'm missing, how can I improve on that skill, you know, so that yes. I can be just as, uh, grow just as much. Because at the end of the day, we want to grow. We want to, because you feel it's, like. It's only natural to want to be better and better. Yeah. 
in everything that you do. Exactly. No one wants to stay stagnant. And it's that drive, you know, that we yeah. have to get better and better. It's fun. It is fun. It's a fun challenge. It's true. I think a lot of times too, I know that there are things that I could do, but I'm not morally or there's just things I don't, that I feel like don't go with my character, not even moral, even things that don't go with my brand, like certain thumbnails that I know would get more attention, right. certain titles that I know would get more clicks, uh, but they're not me. They don't go with my brand. They're not who I am. So I don't feel comfortable doing it, you know? So yeah. there are things like that, but um, I mean, I just think slow and steady has been my, yeah. and I think staying true to myself and being authentic because then it allows me to do things like this without worrying about what I'm going to say or anything because it is what it is, you know? Exactly. When you yeah. just share it, your truth, there is no stress about it. Yeah. And it's it's very easier, easier, you know? It is. And it's hard enough to build a business in any way, shape or form, let alone try to do it in an inauthentic way. It's like triple the amount of work, you know? And yes. it's, it never works out. People can see through that. They can see you're so trying true. to, you know, lie or not be really authentic you know yeah. about things that you like or the, the the person that you are so would you say when you started youtube would you say it was slow at first and then it picks up when this is what i hear so many other youtubers saying that it's like the first different people have different numbers but like the first hundred thousand or so is like the, the hardest and then it starts picking up or oh gosh i feel like i got to a hundred I got to a hundred years ago. To me, it has been getting past that, that mm -hmm. has been harder, but a lot of it is my own fault because I haven't been as active on TikTok, Instagram, right. things like that. I haven't built a team like yeah. most, I think to take it to the next level, I'm going to have to have some help. And so that's why I've done that. And, um, so I think that I've sabotaged myself in some ways, but you know, it just, it's, it depends on what's more important to you. And sometimes my time and yeah. my peace of mind yeah. is more important than more subscribers. Right. So I think that's, you know, been a lot of my problem is I just haven't done the things that maybe I should have done, but I'm getting there. I'm taking it a little yeah. bit more serious now. Yeah. You know, yeah. short form content is um, something, That's something, you know, I'm working on. Yeah, exactly. Like, it doesn't even have to be shorts, you know, it can be just a short YouTube video, no, no longer than three, four, five minutes, you know, because if somebody comes across a thumbnail, your video, and but they've never listened to you or watch anything from you, um, and it, it's a long video. So like, do I really want to take out 20 minutes out of my time? And what if I don't like that person or their brand or whatever? So, but in, in three, four minutes, you're not asking too much of an investment of their time, you know, yes. and it's just a little introduction. Once, once they're familiarized with you, the next time they're far more likely to want to see more of any topic you share, you know, because yes. just that, like knowing who you are, it's just huge. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I think too, like there's more now, but when I started, let's see, I'm 52 now. When I started YouTube, I was 38. And even back then that was old, like that right. was older. Right. And so there are a lot more mature fashion women, but I don't fit in. I think I'm, I don't know how to say it, but I'm not the typical 52 year old woman uh -huh. I um I don't know I don't I don't I'm not giving up I'm not giving up my style and how yeah, I yeah. Feel and you know I don't feel like you don't want to settle and yeah, yeah I don't have to cut my hair because I'm over 50 that's crazy I mean, yeah. you know what I mean yeah things like that so maybe I'm not um, you're, you're more of a JLo 50 over <laughs> well thank you wow. true. <laughs> I may, that I'm woman is like, I may yeah. not be as relatable and that's my yeah. own, you know, that's my own, I guess, yeah. fault. And it, but it's something I accept. I'd rather be myself and right. appeal to But that's less a good thing, people. you know? Yeah. yeah. You, you don't want to drag yourself down, you know, just so that you can relate, you it know, can. because yes. 
you want people to aspire to be better, to be, you, you yeah. know, you want to be an inspiration. You want to help them go up, not drag yes. yourself down, you know? Yes. And that's, of course, harder in the beginning, but eventually I think the payoff is so much more beautiful, inspiring, and just, it is. that's what we yeah, want. I'm just starting to feel it lately because I get so many messages that people are buying things like, a moto jacket, a leather moto jacket or something that they thought they would never buy and they love it. It makes them feel good. That's what it's all about to me. Yeah. It is, it's a feeling and it doesn't have to be a certain piece of clothing, but it has to be whatever you truly love and what makes you feel the most you. Yeah. And don't give that up because you hit a certain age. Right. I, mean, I understand if you can't wear high heels, but don't feel like you don't right not wear them because you don't want to stand out you know right yeah that's yeah that's very that's very unhealthy thinking you know and uh you i think you can feel it when you start like kind of like putting labels on yourself this is my age this is what i'm supposed to act like it's like who came up with that society yeah. like no make your own world live you know the what makes you happy or we just all, don't even think about like i just don't even think about it at all it's not that i think i'm gonna like a lot of people, I'll get these hater type comments that I'm trying to be too young. And I'm like, I'm not. I, I love my age and every I've never hide it. I'm not trying to be young. I'm just wanting to be my best self. Yeah. There is nothing wrong also with trying to be young. I mean, youthfulness is health, right? I mean, yes. the, the the younger your cells are, the healthier you are. This is why diseases that are of aging they come at a later age like heart disease cancer alzheimer's we don't expect to see them in your 20s 30s or even 40s right or even 50s because we know that like subconsciously everybody knows you know but like scientifically speaking i can confirm to you those are the diseases of aging and so we should aspire to reverse the aging process and one of the best ways you're doing that is with your diet it literally reverses the aging process Amazing. that's how powerful it is you know and that's the thing i think a lot of people they don't realize that it's the food they're eating, the exercise, their habits. They don't realize that this is speeding up their aging process. They're making them gain weight and feel badly about their sel themselves or get depressed. And they're like, oh no, I'm just getting old. It's like, really? You know that that's not the truth. You know, it's not about you getting old. You know that it is your lifestyle. You're just scared to tackle it because it's hard. And I understand that it's, it's hard, it is. you know, but you can do it. Because countless yeah. people are doing it every day. You just have to keep trying and trying. And every time you try, it gets easier and easier and easier. And then eventually it's inevitable that you can do it. You know? know, it's that's to me, that's one thing that makes the carnivore diet magical is it doesn't take long to feel better. It really doesn't. And, and to lose weight and everything. Yes. Yeah. And you're not hungry. Yes. So you don't have that nagging, bad feeling. And I just tell people, don't tell yourself, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. I'm never going to eat a cupcake or whatever. Try it for yeah. a week, then try yeah. it for another week, then try it for another week and just see how you feel, you exactly. know? Exactly. And if you have a cupcake, it's not the end of the world. Yes. It's fine. You know, if you had one cupcake a month and the rest is carnivore, you are doing better than 99.99999999% yes. everybody on this planet. Trust me. I agree. The universe. <laughs> I agree. So, Yeah. I love it. Okay, so that, g walk us through like a, a, a day in your life, given given that you're a YouTuber and a carnivore and all the all the stuff we love. Okay, <laughs> a typical day would be to wake up about. My favorite time is about five thirty or six. Okay. I like to get how, up. How many hours do you need of sleep? I usually get about eight. Okay, I, I sleep great. That's another thing carnivore did. Head hits the pillow, sleep. I mean, just awesome. So I get up about 5.30. I like to come up here in my office and check my emails, watch some videos. And most of the time I film about three times a week, three or four. Mm -hmm. So let's just say it's a day that I'm going to make a video. I've already got it in my head and I might've already done a thumbnail or done some B-roll for it, but I will, you know, get mentally prepared to maybe make a few notes. And then about, I like to start putting my makeup on and stuff about anytime, anytime between eight and nine o'clock. And then I will come back upstairs and do my video. And then my son goes to high school, but he, get, he also goes to, he does online college courses. So he only has to go to high school from 12 to three. 
So I'll take him, then I'll go get lunch, come back, start editing, and then I'll have to go get him, come home, and then do some more editing. And then I always eat. John fixes my dinner about 5.30 or 6. And then I don't usually work much after that. I might do some, you know, pictures or something like that. But nine times out of 10, I will have already posted my video. And then, you know, how it is. Then I'll sit on the back porch with my kitty cats or something, but I'll um, answer comments and do my Instagram. Yeah. And then I, we usually, John and I watch TV at night before we go to bed and then starts all over. It's pretty fabulous, actually. <laughs> it's just li living the dream, being creative, yes. talking about things that you absolutely love on a daily yes. basis. I mean, just, I think everybody should be a YouTuber. My uh -huh. husband always tells me like, but you, you think everybody should do everything that you're doing all the time. I'm like, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> I know. I know. When I wasn't feeling good like the other week, I was like, you know, most people say when they're not feeling good, they'll appreciate the days that they do. But I already appreciate right. the day. I, I already, I mean, when I pull in the driveway, I'm thinking, I love my house. When I, pull, you know, I already have created a life that I love. So I don't need to do a lot. I don't need to go out of town a lot. I don't need to be entertained a lot. I just love being, you know. Yes. I get it a hundred percent. Me too. Like I don't, I don't need to go out every day and do stuff or like, see yeah. people. I'm like, I'm just happy here doing everything that I'm doing, you know, creating. Yes. So. I, I love that term romanticize your life. Yeah. That's how I do. Like I, when I have a notebook, it's a, it's a special notebook that I really like. It's a special pen. I love my car. I like being, I make sure that everything I do is special every part of my day and that way I think you just enjoy you know every part of your day so that I love it I know yeah. it's like that that's why I I love to watch those reality TV, TV shows like I don't know if if you're into that too but like I love the the Paris Hilton the Kim Kardashian all the because it's like mansions and like gorgeous houses and like everything looks beautiful it's like the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed it's like everything looks so gorgeous you're just happy all the time yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know so I love me too I love everything that like I pay special attention to everything that I get everything has to have look at that let me show you <laughs> yes absolutely <laughs> You know? Absolutely. I have the same one and it's all white. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, I love that. Yes. I love that. Yeah. So, uh, awesome. Well, thank you so much. This has been the most wonderful hour. I'm so oh, happy we finally got to connect and I finally got to talk to you in person. Um, Lisa, where can people find you? Oh, goodness. Okay. So it's Lisa, Lisa D1 on YouTube and on Instagram on TikTok, it's the real Lisa, Lisa D1. And that is it. Yes, and I will, Lisa Duncan. Yes. And I will um, link them here on the uh, video. I'm sure people can see it right now. And I will link them in the description box below so they can just click on it and find right. you easily. Um, do you, what are your plans in the next five to 10 years before I'll let you go? Oh, gosh. I just plan on keeping on as long as I can hobble in front of the camera and talk I plan on doing it I have no plans on stopping because uh -huh. it's so fulfilling to me yep so I, get I get it I get it awesome thank you so much Lisa for being with us and thank you. thank you all for joining us I hope you enjoyed this episode if you did make sure you give this video a thumbs up subscribe and hit that little notification bell icon so YouTube alerts you every time I post a new video thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one